thank her, thank God for her being so faithful and that that we're doing here for the kingdom of God. All right? Amen, amen, and amen. Okay, praise God. I'm going to ask, amen, that you get your Bibles. We're going to be going to a few scriptures to introduce the subject that the Lord has given us to share on today. And we're going to start in Psalms 1, verse number 3. Psalms 1, verse 3. And I'm going to go then to John 15, verses 1 and 2. And then I'm going to skip over to 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and 17. So bear with us. They are, it's not a lot of reading, but just a few scriptures that we'll have to flip to today to introduce that which God has given us to share with you today. Amen? Amen. Psalms 1, verse 3, when I began reading here, and the scripture reads, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. John chapter 15. Uh, verses 1 and 2, we want to also read, and the scripture reads, I am the true vine, this is Jesus speaking, he says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Then 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 17, the scripture reads, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, I want you to notice that the scripture says, worketh for us. It says, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us. A far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. And today I want to use for a simple topic today, for a few moments, entitled, It's Working For Me. It's Working For Me. Would you all say that with me? Come on, say, it's working for me. It's working for me. I want you to bow your heads as we pray. Precious Father, we thank you now in the precious and mighty name of Jesus we give you praise for this day you have made. We exalt you as Lord of our lives. We thank you, Father, because as the song says, you are good, good Father. So we thank you today, Lord, for loving us, being faithful to us, extending your grace and your mercy in our lives. We just thank you for that today. And now, Lord, we ask as we Share your word today that you would touch the hearts and the minds of your people, that your word would go out and that it will accomplish that which you sent it to do. And we'll give you praise, we'll give you glory, we'll give you honor, the matchless and the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, amen and amen. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. It's working for me. I want to begin by saying to you today that ultimately the process that God purposes to take us through in our lives is for the distinct purpose of our lives bringing glory to Him. 
In other words, we must understand that our lives are simply tools that God desires to use for his glory. And in order for this to take place as God would have it to do, we ourselves have to be willing to submit ourselves wholly to the plan that God has for our lives. And with that said, I want to begin by focusing our attention upon John chapter 15, where Jesus is speaking. And in his speaking, Jesus is teaching his disciples some very valuable principles that are important for every believer to understand. So I want to emphasize the key principle, principles that Jesus speaks about in this particular passage. But firstly, I want you to understand that Jesus identifies three very important roles that define our relationship with him and the Father. Those roles are that of Jesus the vine, the believers, the branches, and God the Father, the husbandman. So I want to begin by looking at the specific scriptures in John 15 that identify each of these roles. Jesus start out, he starts out in verse 1 by saying that I am the true vine and my father is the husbandman. And what Jesus reveals in this teaching is that it is his father, the husbandman, who tends to the branches. In other words, he's letting us know that it is his father who carefully plants and cares for the branches. And now let's look at verse 5 to understand who the branches are. Jesus said in John 15 and 5 that I am the vine and ye are the branches. In other words, Jesus makes it clear that you and I are the branches. And since we are the branches, this passage of scripture clearly lets us know that God the Father, as the husband man, is the one who takes care of us. I want you to get that. God is the one who takes care of us, the branches. This is why Philippians 4 verse 19 says to us that he will supply all of our need according to his riches in glory because he is the husband man. He tends to the branches. We must understand that God knows all about our needs. And of course sometimes we, we feel that God must not know what I need. But God knows every single need in your life. Why? Because it is his role to take care of the branches. I need somebody to talk to me for a moment and shout, God is taking care of me. Come on, somebody. Come on, say it again. God is taking care of me. You see, we are the branches. Now the next thing that I need you to see from this passage in John 15 verse 2 is that Jesus identifies two types of branches. The first type of branch is one that beareth not fruit. The second type of branch is one that beareth fruit. So there are two types of branches that are presented here in the text. And then, in John 15 and 2, Jesus conveys that he deals with these two types of branches in two different ways. So let's understand, how is it that Jesus deals with these two types 
of branches. For the first type of branch, Jesus says in verse 2, Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, watch this, he taketh away. He says, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. So this means that the way that Jesus deals with the first branch, the one that does not bear fruit, is he takes it away. In other words, it means that he releases it from the vine. And who is the vine? Jesus is the vine. He releases that branch from him. He separates from it, which means that the first branch is no longer a part of the vine. In other words, this is the branch that he does not anoint. And then in verse 2, Jesus reveals how he deals with the second type of branch. For he says in the second part of the verse, every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it that it might bring forth more fruit. So he deals with the second branch differently than he does the first branch, the one that did not have any fruit. But now the one that beareth fruit, that one that does the things that he desires him to do. The Bible says he purged it. Why? That it may bring forth more fruit. And now understand that this word purchase means to prune. And I need you to get this. It means to prune. And what does prune mean? It, it means to cut or to cut off. It means to remove dead or living parts for the purpose of increasing fruit. To remove the dead parts or living parts for the purpose of increasing fruit. Anybody that spends time planting knows exactly what I'm talking about. Because the one that plants knows how, that one that knows how to plant well, knows how to purge his plants. So in other words, what the text is revealing to us is that for the branch that beareth fruit, the Father cuts on it so that it may bring forth more fruit. Now notice that the husband man does not cut on this branch to punish it. To make it better at producing what God the Father likes and desires out of its life. In other words, because God likes what he sees in the branch, he cuts it so that it produces more of what he sees. That is why if you are a fruit bearer, sometimes things might seem hard in your life. At times, when you have only been trying to do what is pleasing in the sight of God, sometimes things feel hard. Uh, I've seen sometimes things get tough in your life because you are a fruit bearer. Amen. But you must understand that the only reason that it seems hard is because God likes what he sees in you. I need you to get this because this is what you need to understand when you get into the battles with the enemy of your life. Because the enemy will speak to you and just because you are having struggles in your life, he will say to you that God doesn't care about you. And that God doesn't love you. But oftentimes when the Bible lets us know here uh, that it is the fruit bearer that he purges. It is the fruit bearer that he cuts upon. That it might produce more fruit. In other words, God is pruning you to make you better. 
Sometimes God takes you through tough times to make you better. Somebody needs to hear me today. Sometimes God will take you through struggles in your life to make you better. So, so we must understand these things in what I will call the wilderness time of our life. The time where we are going through. And sometimes when nobody is there to speak a word in our life, we need to have a word in our own heart to let us know that God said he will never leave me. And God is always there. You need to, sometimes you need to know how to preach to yourself. Come on somebody. You need to know how to encourage yourself in the times of your life when it looks like nothing is working. Oh, that's why God had me to preach to you today. It's working for you. Somebody come on and say it. Let the devil hear you say it's working for me. Come on, somebody. It's working for me. And see, I need you to understand that pruning isn't much fun. Come on, somebody. You can ask the tree. <laughs> It'll tell you, amen, if it could talk, pruning ain't fun. Nobody wants to be cut on. It hurts sometimes when you're being pruned. So there are some important bullets that we should understand about pruning. So that the devil doesn't win you over in the midst of the pruning season of your life. The first thing to understand is that sometimes pruning by God is painful but profitable. I need you to get that. Sometimes Pruning by God is painful but profitable. Secondly, you must understand that pruning by God is a good thing and not a bad thing. It's a good thing and not a bad thing. Why? Because God only prunes you because he likes what he sees in you. Because he only prunes you to make you better. And that you might bring forth more fruit than you did before. Remember now, he purgeth the fruit, or the branch rather, that beareth fruit because he likes what he sees. In other words, it's working for you. I need somebody to go ahead and declare with me, it's working for me. Come on, say it again, it's working for me. You see, when, when you can undergo an operation by God in your life, when you can undergo things in your life that you would rather not go through, and you can still shout in the devil's face that it's still working. The enemy doesn't know what to do with you when you understand the process. When you understand what God is doing in your life. So again, we must understand that it is a good thing to be pruned by God. I need you to stay with me here. In other words, sometimes the purpose of the pain that we suffer in our lives is to bring forth more good in us. And, and so what that means is that we have to be careful that we do not misinterpret the pain in our lives. Did you hear what I said? You've got to be careful not to misinterpret the pain. Because pain isn't always bad. A good illustration of that it would be the doctor sometimes who has to cut on you. Uh, in an operation. The doctor is not cutting on you to harm you, but he is cutting on you to make you better. So the next thing that I need you to see is that when God cuts on you, you need to understand that God is cutting on you for your next season. But you see, every gardener that prunes his plant prunes it for the next season. So therefore, the fact that you have been cut by God, pruned by God, should indicate to you that there is another season coming 
in your life. I need to deal with that a moment. You need to understand that when God takes time to prune you and cut stuff away from you, cut things out of your life, oftentimes God is pruning you for your next season. And what you need to understand, as I said earlier, don't misinterpret the pain. Because the only reason the pain is there is because there's another season. Somebody shout with me, there's another season in my life. Come on, somebody. There is another season. God is pruning me because God's got something for me in my next season. If somebody understood what God was trying to say to you, you'd shout all over this place. Because you begin to understand that God is working on you for your next season. You begin to understand that God is not through with you. The enemy would have you to think sometimes that God is done. Uh, the pain is an indication that he's done. But no, the reason that the pain is there is because you have another season. And then most of all, we must understand that every cut, every time God prunes you, he does so for his glory. We must also understand that God prunes us by subjecting us to situations in our lives that try our faith. This is why James chapter 1 verse 2 and 3 says to us, my brethren, all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. You see, and if you think about it, patience is a type of fruit that comes from the branch that God has chosen to prove. And how many of you know that this is exactly the type of fruit that some of us need? We need some patience. It's, the, it's exactly the type of fruit that many of us need in our lives because oftentimes we don't have much patience. If God don't do it now, if he didn't do it yesterday, if he don't do it today, we don't have patience to wait. And what happens in those moments of our lives is that we give the enemy an opportunity to work in our lives because we don't understand the process of what God is doing in our life. We don't understand that God knows what he's doing, that he's just pruning you for your next season. Sometimes you got to learn how to talk to that devil and let that devil know, I know may be going through some struggles in my life right now. Everything ain't working good like I want it to work right now. But I understand that the only reason it's that way is because God is just pruning me for my next season. God is getting me ready to step into something that he has for my life. And when we understand that God is still working on us for our next season, the enemy has a problem with us. Because sometimes when you understand that God is still working, somebody say, he's working on me. You see, see, when you understand God is still working, sometimes even in the midst of your affliction, there is a hand that would go up and say, thank you, God, for taking me through what you're taking me through because I know I have another season. The only reason I'm having to deal with this pain is because I have another season. So even in the midst of your pain, I dare you to lift up your hands and say thank you, God. I need somebody even right now to think on what you've been going through in your life and lift your hands now and say thank you. Come on, somebody. Come on, tell them thank you, God. Because I my pain. I understand that I'm going through for my next season. Somebody ought to shout, it ain't over yet. God is not too blessing me. Oh my God, I come to tell the church house that there is another season. Perpetual praise. I come to tell you that we have another season. Oh, there might be some pain that we have to go through now, but there is another season in our 
lives. God has to prune some of us because some of us are not doing as we should. God has to prune the church. Come on, somebody, because there is another season. And I come to tell somebody today that everybody can enter in the next season with you. You ain't going to hear me today. Everybody can't go into your season. Everybody can't for your life. Oh, I don't know about you. Oh, but I made up my mind that I'm going to dance in the midst of my season. While I'm going through my trouble, while God is pruning me, I'm getting ready for my next season. I'm going to work on my dance. I'm going to dance now so I can dance later. Come on, somebody. Shout with me. Working on my next season. Is anybody listening to me today? God is working on my next season. Can I get somebody to shout with me in this house? That God is working on my next season. Yes, there's another season in your marriage that God is working on. There's another season in your health that God is working on. I need you to shout loud. That God is working on me. Come on, somebody. God is pruning me for my next season. This is why the Bible says in Psalms 34 and 19 that many are the afflictions of the righteous. Why? Because the righteous refer to those who have to be pruned by God so that they can bear much fruit. God is working on you because he is pruning you. So that means that when the husband man notice the righteous that are bearing fruit, he takes them through a process of more growth. You see, many don't make it to the level of the next growth because they can and make it through the process. But I come to tell somebody today, don't cry over nobody that falls out during the process. Don't cry over nobody that leaves the process. God's just pruning them. God is just cutting them away. Come on, somebody. So don't cry over who leaves. God is getting you ready for your next season. I'm with somebody and he'll do what I was about. God is getting us ready. Somebody shout, he's getting us ready. Yes, for our next season. That's why sometimes we have to put up with some stuff that we'd rather not put up with sometimes. Oh my God, and I know what I'm talking about here because there's some stuff, amen, that I have to deal with at times that I'd rather not deal with. But God sometimes has to whisper my ear and let me know that I'm still pruning. Come on, somebody. The church, I'm still pruning you. You got to be ready for your next season. Some of these folk, come on, somebody. Some of these things are happening in your life is just a wait. And sometimes God has to cut it off. Come on, somebody. And sometimes we wonder why it keeps happening. You ever wonder, amen, you ever had some things in your life to happen in your life and you wonder why it keeps on happening? Why? Why does it keep on happening? Well, I got a word for you today. God is just proving you. God is getting you ready. Because oftentimes it is because you are a fruit bearer. Can I say something to you today? Don't stop bearing fruit. Learn how to go through God's process in anticipation of what God is getting ready to do. You see, when you can understand what God is doing, when you spend some time with God praying and asking God to lead you and to help you through your process, sometimes you learn how 
to shout right by yourself. You see, come on, somebody. Everybody ain't going to shout with you. Everybody ain't going to go into the next season with you. I ain't mad with you if you don't shout with me. I ain't because you can't go in the next season with me. Come on, somebody. So sometimes you got to learn how to dance by yourself. Sometimes, my God, you got to learn how to praise it by yourself. Sometimes, my God, you just have to imagine God dancing with you. Anybody ever had a dance with your father? <laughs> Come on, somebody. Sometimes you have to dance. Why? Because you know that the presence of, the, of God is there. You see, when God is present, you can still dance. David danced until his clothes began to fall off. Come on, somebody. Because David understood that he had another season. Somebody shout, I have another season. Aha. Uh -huh. And so, so we've got to understand, amen, that, that God knows what he's doing in our lives. Because there are many afflictions of the righteous. But then, you know, I love the text because the text doesn't stop there. But it goes on to say, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Psalms 34 and 18. And we must not forget that affliction implies pain sometimes and it applies it implies suffering sometimes but as I've said to you the pain and the afflictions is not always bad somebody say with me don't misinterpret the pain it's not always bad because sometimes it's just a part of God's pruning process. This is why 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 17 says these words. It says our afflictions worketh for us. Notice it says for our light affliction. Watch this. Which is but for a moment. Working for us. I want to read that again. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, working for us. And what does it work? The scripture says that it worketh for us a exceeding, a far more exceeding, an eternal weight of glory. You see, you must understand that the afflictions that God allows in your life, according to this scripture, carry some weight in glory. Are y'all listen to me? It carries some weight in glory. And then there are some promises that God makes to us. After the pruning is done in our lives. You can bear with me. I want to flip over to Psalms 1 and 3 for a moment. Because God lets us know that after the pruning is done, there are some promises that he has for our life. He says in Psalms 1 and 3, For ye shall be like a tree by the rivers of water. In other words, God is saying today that after he gets through cutting on you, after he gets through pruning you, you're going to be able to withstand some stuff that you couldn't withstand before. You're going to be like the tree planted by the rivers of water. And what does a tree planted by the rivers of water represent? It represents a mature tree. Now the next thing I need you to notice in Psalms 1 and 3 is that the tree is not just 
by the rivers of water, but that the tree has been planted by the rivers of water. That's a key word. Sometimes we miss that in that text. But the Bible says that it is planted by the water. You see, what I want you to see is that the word planted implies that this tree has been planted with purpose. In other words, it was intentional. Intentional. It was planted. In other words, it is not like some of the weeds that may come up in my yard sometimes that I don't like to come up. But God was intentional in planting this tree by the rivers of water. Then I want you to notice that the tree wasn't planted in any place, but the scripture is clear in stating that the tree was planted by the rivers of water and that it wasn't just carelessly placed anywhere. But you see, the tree was intentionally and purposefully planted in a place that supports and sustains life. So what is the point here of God saying that you shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water in order to have a better appreciation for what God is saying to us? You must keep in mind the purpose and necessity of water. So what is the purpose of water? Simply put, the purpose of water is to support life. You see, when scientists all around the world are looking for life on other planets, the first thing they look for is water. Why? Because if they see any evidence of water, they will conclude that there is an indication or possibility of life. This is why God plants you by the rivers of water. It is because it is what supports the life in you. That is exactly what the Spirit of God is to us. This is why John 6 and 63 says, The Spirit giveth life. Because that's what water does. You need to understand that tree that is planted by the rivers of water. You must understand it represents you. The believer who is operating by the Spirit of God in your life. Water represents the Spirit of God. It's symbolic of the Spirit of God. That's why Jesus said to the woman at the well in John 4, Whosoever drinketh of this water, this natural water, shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up of everlasting life. Then Psalm 23 lets us know that the man who is planted by the rivers of water, watch this, shall be like a tree that brings forth his fruit in his season. What am I saying? I'm saying to you that God is expecting for you, <clears throat> excuse me, to bring forth some fruit in your next season. Amen. Even if you have to endure the afflictions, even after you have endured the afflictions in your life. Not only that, but the mere fact that God allows the pruning process in your life. I need you to understand is that it proves that you have another season. Come on, say with me again, don't misinterpret the pain. Come on, say it again, don't misinterpret the pain. One more thing I need you to see in Psalms 1 and 3 is that it says that your leaf also shall not wither. What does that mean? Wither means to weaken or to lose strength. It means to lose vigor or vitality. In other words, because you are planted by the rivers of water, 
you will not wither, you will not become weak after the afflictions in your life come upon you, but you shall be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. The last thing I want to say about this verse in Psalm 1 and 3, the Bible says, and whatsoever, come on somebody, you do it shall prosper. Not prosper in man's eyes. That's many of our problems. We're trying to prosper in man's eyes. But God said, whatsoever you do with that tree that is planted by the rivers of water, whatsoever you do with shall prosper. Oh my God. This is the reason that in spite of everything the enemy tries in your life, somebody say, I'm still coming forward. Come on. Come on, say, I'm still coming forward. No matter what he tries, you need to understand that it happened because you have another season. It happened because you have another season. Anybody may listen to me today. Anybody hear what I'm saying today? Somebody, come on, say with me, I have another season. I come to let the church know today that it's working for you. God has another season for you. I need you to be strong during the process because you have another season. Somebody say with me, come on, I need you to say with me that it's working for me. Come on. Come on, say it again, it's working for me. you got to see like God sees. You are just like a tree planted with purpose by the rivers of water. You shall bring forth your fruit in your season. I don't know about you, but that word from God makes me want to dance. Makes me just want to give him some praise because God has confirmed that in spite of what the devil says, we have another season. <laughs> oh my God. We have another season. Everything, every pain is working for us. It's working for us. So we give God praise. I want you to put your hands together. Come on, put your hands together. Let's give God some praise. This is the word that God had me to bring forth to you today. Amen. That is working for you. It's not always going to be sunshine in your life. Every now and then it's going to rain. But watch this. Even the rain is just like the pain. It causes growth. Rain comes to stimulate growth. So this is the word that God has for you today. And I thank God for it. Thank God for the word that he's given me for you today. Sometimes we take the word for granted. Sometimes we think sometimes that's just the past. That's just past. No, listen to me. Don't you dare discount the word that God sends. Don't dare discount it. Because God has a word for your life. Anybody doesn't want you to understand that. Doesn't matter how many is present or not present. Doesn't matter if there's a thousand, ten thousand, or four, or five. Hear the word of God. Amen. I say to those who may be listening by way of social media, pray that the word has been a blessing to you. I don't know who's listening or who may be listening at a later time. Sometimes there are so many more that listens at a later time. I pray that something has been said that would encourage you and that will help you to understand some of the pain in your life. I say to you today, inspired by God, don't misinterpret your pain. 
Don't misinterpret it. God is proving somebody for another season. Amen. God is getting you ready for what he's going to do next in your life. Some folks that's looking at you now are not going to know who you are later. Amen. Because you're going to be in your next season. Thank you, Lord. And can't nobody do it like God. How many you know can't nobody do you like God can do you? Amen. Can't nobody bless you like God can bless you. God knows what he's doing in your life. Let me pray. Today I want to pray for every person under the sound of my voice. If you're dealing with anything in your life, don't accept defeat. God always causes us to win, Amen. the Bible says, in Christ. So I want you to stand. If you're able to stand, I'm going to pray. For those of you that may be listening by way of social media, if you're listening now or later, I want you to bow your heads. Let's pray. Allow God to speak in your life. Our Father, our God, I say thank you today for this inspired word. Lord, one that I believe you sent to loose burdens in the lives of your people. To encourage those who are dealing with pain and struggle in their lives. God, you are pruning some for their next season. And we just give you praise. God in advance. For what you are doing in our lives. We decree today Lord. That we'll be faithful. Until we get to our next season. And then we'll continue to be faithful. For what you have even beyond that season. You are a good God. You are a God. That loves each and every one of us. You're God. Who's never lost a case. You're God. Who brings forth. Plants. That have a season. So God I give you praise. Look on that individual today Lord. Who is struggling in their life. Struggling in their health. Struggling in their finances. Struggling in their marriage. Struggling on their job. I just believe God you are doing something in this season. To prepare them for the next season. That they will be, be, be weary. Not weary in well doing. Because in due season. They will reap. If they faint not. So God we thank you today. We love you. Lord, for that person that don't know you in the part of their sins, I pray, God, that they would come to know you, that they would cry out, what must I do to be saved? I give you praise for it now. I bless you for it now. In Jesus' matchless name, amen, amen, and amen. Now, need everybody put your hands together. Let's give God some praise. Come on, come on, come on. Give him some praise. Amen. Praise God. God thank God. Amen. Amen. God bless each of you.